Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to be installing a database. Now, regardless of the programming language that you're using, C, C++, Java, you know, PHP, Pascal, whatever that is, um, at some point you need to write the data because otherwise, you know, when you leave the program, you lose all the information that you had. Um, so there are two ways to do this. You can store the information in a file or you can store it in a database. Now, typically, if one person is using the application at a time, then you can store the information in a file, which makes it pretty simple. If you have multiple people trying to access the information, or if you're trying to access it from different locations, then you tend to use a database. So if we had a, an application, I don't know, that had a, a to-do list, and I was the only person using that, then again, I could write this to a file. However, if we had a to-do to list on the web, and maybe we had two, 10, 10,000, 100,000 people putting all their to-dos into, uh, into this web application, then you need to have a database. And there are a lot of them out there, but we're gonna use a, a free one called MySQL. Um, you can pronounce it MySQL or MySQL, but it's MySQL.com. And they always update the website, to, but so depending on when you access it, it may or may not look like this. But what we're gonna do is go to Downloads, GA, and we want the community server. This is the free server. So we'll download this. And I have a Windows 32-bit. So I'll select download for the 32-bit. And you can register if you want. I prefer not to. So I'm going to say no thanks. Just take me to the downloads. We'll download this file here. So what we're going to do is we're going to install this on the local uh, machine with a few options. But again, we, uh, we have to set this up and get it running so that we can persist or store the data from our applications, um, application to, uh, to, to one place. Now, if I want, if I'm using you know, multiple languages, Java, C, C++, and all these other ones, I can have one database that all of the applications, regardless of their language, can connect to. So uh, that makes it pretty convenient. So if you had, uh, let's say you built a PHP application for the web, then um, you wanted to make it available on an iPhone or some other means, you can. So you don't have to, to rebuild the entire application every time. And this is probably a good point to talk about this, but when we're developing applications, they tend to have three tiers. It's called a model, a view, and a controller. So um, the model is the data model. That's what we're gonna store in the database. The view is how you view that information. So if it's on the web, it's gonna be PHP, you know, Python, Java, some other language. Um, if it's on a desktop, it will probably be you know, C, C++, maybe you're using Pascal or something like that. So the data can be used, the database can be used regardless of the application. The language can change. And then the controller, you know, if you want to, you can, you can write that in one language and then put a different uh, skin on there. It really depends on, on how you do that. So this is almost finished downloading here. Let's go back and look at some of the other tools they have. The community server, again, what we were talking about before is the free version. They have a cluster, which we won't need. Uh, the GUI tools are actually pretty good to use. Um, this allows you to manage and, and work on the database without using a command line interface. Um, lots of people like GUI tools and they have some free ones here. So we'll download this. Again, we're gonna go no thanks. Just take me to the downloads. I'll select this. Let's save it to the desktop. Okay, so we have the one downloaded. Let's go ahead and install that while we're downloading the GUI. Let's select run. All right, now we can set up the database. You have to accept their license agreement. We're gonna go typical in, uh, installation, which means it just picks the most common options. Install. Takes a few minutes to do this.
There we go. And they're showing some of the different services they have. Okay, so now we're going to configure our database. We'll take standard for what we're doing, that's fine. We're gonna install it as a service. What this means is anytime Windows boots up, it will automatically start the database uh, application. You don't have to, to do this, but it makes it easier if you have a dedicated uh, development machine. You have to give a password. I'm giving a very simple password. And, oop, and I misspelled it. That should be right. Do you want to able, enable access from other machines? If you're doing this on your local desktop, you can say no. Um, if you're putting this on a server where multiple developers are going to need access to it, then you want to select yes. Okay, so our other download is finished. That's good. So what it's doing is it's um, finalizing these and it's setting the system up as a Windows service to automatically start it. Now we're actually starting the service. Okay, looks like we're finished. So now what we'll do is we'll install the workbench. This is the GUI application. There are a lot of different ones you can use out there. If you're um, programming in PHP, let's see if this will. If you're programming in, in PHP, it actually comes with one. There's a PHP My Ad, Admin you're using XAMPP or something like that. So you may not need uh, need the workbench. So we're finished here. It looks like I didn't have uh, some of the files that the workbench needed. I'll probably start out using a, uh, a simple one, but we have it installed and running and we're good to go. So in the next video, we'll start by creating our first database. See you then. Bye-bye.